Hello, you guys. Thanks for jumping on. I'm Elizabeth Hefner, Sapphire Ambassador, and I have the privilege of bringing to you part three of Strength Based Leadership. And we're going to talk about why people follow and who they're looking for to follow. And I thought this was a really great section, um, really insightful. And he really talks about how you're only a leader if people are following you. And I think this is a really good reflection. And I think it's okay if we don't always have tons and tons of followers, follow whatever, right away or where we are in our business. But it means that we now have tools by reading this sort of thing to know what we can work on in order to have more people following us, right? And it's even interesting when I think about parenting, um, how I can be a better leader to my children so that they want to follow me and I don't have to just get up and be a dictator, which that happens too because they're kids and all the things, but just thinking, okay, how can I reflect and prepare them better and all the things, all the things, all the things. So I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for not having support down here. So whatever it happens. Okay. And then just, I'm going to come back to some of the stuff that he talked about in the beginning of this section at the end, but it was really interesting to say that followers are looking for four basic needs, trust, compassion, stability, and hope. And a few weeks ago is probably several weeks ago. Now, Jason Dorsey, did a, a special call for the jewels as a follow-up to the training that he did at the Emerald Extravaganza in Hawaii. And he was talking specifically about different generations. And I feel like this is the same thing. People want to feel that they, that they can trust you. They want to have compassion from you. They want to see that stability and that hope. And I think like, this is the best thing that I can offer to my children, right? This is the best thing that I can offer to my team is these four things. Um, and then of course, other things that are really important that people are looking for in order to follow someone were the honesty, integrity, and respect. And respect is something that is built and it comes through that relationship that's built on trust. So if you're think if you're working on the relationship, a lot of these are worked on with relationship and honesty. People see that over time. Integrity, they see that over time. That isn't something that you have to like pound into their heads or really say anything specific. It's stuff that people are going to see in you as you're working with them and as you're building relationship with them. Um, the other thing is just really having a positive bias, even when things are tough. Um, and I couldn't help but think, as, as I was reading this and preparing this, how our managers and things responded when we when COVID first hit in the hospital and we were all scared and thinking, oh my gosh, we're all going to die. <coughs> and there was a lot of reactivity, 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 of course. And I do think our managers were working on having more stability and systems in place. <laughs> but I remember saying stuff like, this isn't going to last forever. People aren't going to be contagious forever and ever. We are going <clears> to, <throat> so sorry, we are going to see improvements in this. <clears throat> the severity of illness has to go down over time. You know, normal like immuno immunological things that have been studied for a very long time and being able to remind people of that. So I couldn't help but think that during times of that, when we can offer hope and offer stability and offer that we can look into the future and realize that this moment of craziness isn't the long term. This isn't where we're going to stay. So I am so sorry. I feel like I'm such a mess tonight. Um, and just offering that hope for the future. And I really feel like we have that opportunity over and over and over in this business is that we can offer hope for people in their health over and over and over again. And it doesn't even matter if they have, <clears throat> okay, hold on.
it doesn't matter if someone has had, you know, a change in their health or has had a big detox or fell off the product usage. We can always offer hope and offer the solution and offer a problem solve that we can help them through that. And we're always offering hope. Okay, it didn't work to take it in the morning. Let's try a different time. Okay, it didn't work to take it at night. Let's try it. You know, we are always offering hope with that and problem solving with that. <laughs> and when we lose hope, then people lose confidence. Um, they become disengaged and they can often feel helpless. And so this is where we talk so, so, so much about relationship and helping people stay connected with the onboarding system. And then we also, the flip side is this business side, like, okay, you didn't hit that goal, but that's okay. You still can. We're still going to go after that. It might just be in a couple more months. Okay. You had some people quit on you. That's normal in this business. I have people quit on me too. Like we're always offering hope in the business, in the products, in the healing journey, in the business journey. We're always able to do that. And I think that's super unique with Plexus, um, much more than some corporate jobs where there's so many things happening all at the same time. And it off it allows us to have a more have some simplicity really in our lives and in our people's lives because any objection that we have or see, it's not so out of the blue that we've never seen it before, right? We can totally problem solve through that. Um, <clears throat> I love how he talks about not falling for the tr trap of reacting to the needs of the day over and over again, but to initiate for the future. So of course there are day-to-day -day things that we have to do. There are day-to-day -day things we have to do in our house to keep it running. And there's day-to-day -day things we have to do in our business to keep it running. But when we have people that are also sharing or going silver or it's new on the products. We're still offering that hope for them for the future, initiating that next thing. Okay, next month, based on how you're feeling right now, I really think that you would feel really good on adding some active in. Um, let's add that. Let's use your perks credits, you know, that sort of thing. We're able to initiate something else for the future and help people see that these are long-term products, not short-term. Now that is all built in to our 90 day customer. Well, I have a 90 day customer care because I took the 10 points of contact, did that, and then extended out it out through 90 days. So I'm offering hope, offering initiation for the next step, the next step, the next step through 90 days. And then I'm continuing with relationship with, with my people. Um, and then my team members, they probably get sick of hearing me sometimes. Um, <laughs> and I've noticed this too, with like my workers group, that if I'm not in there initiating, then I don't see as much going on with them. And so it's, I've just seen it happen. And I'm like, okay, let's plan something. Let's plan an event. Let's plan a Zoom. Let's plan something for in-person, whatever it is. And just getting that ball rolling for something to look forward to and that we're working towards. And like, we're taking our IPA more seriously when we know we have a messenger chat coming up to add people to it, right? <clears throat> so that's exciting and just one really easy thing to do. And then identifying opportunities for the future. And this is where we get to talk about casting a big vision. This is where we get to say, hey, Hawaii, hey, leaders retreat. Any Anyone can earn leaders retreat, right? And that's the next step to helping you to earn Emerald and earn the trip and earn the car, whatever. We can always be casting a vision and that's really good. And then at the end there, he says, if you're not creating hope, then chances are no one else is either. And that really hit me. I'm like, oh, this is really good. This is, <laughs> I need to put that on my computer right here. So I see it often. Um, but what I wanted to ask is, and you don't even have to name the leader, right? But I want you to think about someone that has influenced you in a positive way. What leader has has the most positive influence in your daily life um and then three words to describe them and you if you have someone in mind that you want to acknowledge and name like please do but if not at least tell us a little bit about them or those three things and you know <clears throat> that was my question so have the same question that he asked but I thought it was really good and I wrote down several people in my book Thank you. 
All right. Well, I will share. So they, we have some diamonds on our team, obviously above us. And one of them, when I think of her and I think of all that she's accomplished and not just in Plexus, but in life in general, I think the three words that describe her are work ethic, <clears throat> proof, proof that we can do this right and discipline. So I could probably name that about all of our diamonds, but I or different things about all of our diamonds. But that was one of the ones that I can share with you to get the ball rolling. I'll share. So um, it says, um, describe what this person contributes to your life. So specifically, I put encouragement, understanding, and then it wasn't one word, but I put they lead by example and set the bar high, um, which I think is really, really important. But encouragement to me goes along with hope because not every day in this business is easy. There are days that are hard. There are seasons that are hard, whatever. And every single time I've gone through one of those seasons, I feel like I've been lifted up and like told like, it's going to be, it's going to be okay. Um, and it gives me the encouragement to continue going forward. So, um, that's really important. I think. Okay, I'll go. So um, mine, even though she's not with us anymore, um, I would say my mom. And it's because um, belief, or commitment, and um, love, those are all things that are really important that were really instilled in me um, from a very young age and have continued to go forth through my work, my family, my life, all of those things. Um, and she was a really good example of even when your life is falling apart, it seems, or things are not going well, or you start to lose bits of yourself or you become sick. Um, you know, those are things that, that you can always hang on to. And I just want to make sure that I'm continuing to instill, oops, sorry, hit my table, um, instill those things in the people that I work with uh, and in my family too. Hi, I'll share about my um, collaborating physician at work. Um, she is very patient, intelligent, and caring. And if I could add a fourth one, it would be approachable. Um, and I think that makes you want to be more a leader, someone too, that makes you want to be more like that person. So someone you strive to not only look up to, but try to be more like. I'll go next. Um, so mine I thought of were kind of along the same lines of many of you have already said, but encouragement, um, kindness, but sympathy too, um, maybe for what is going on. Um, we've been sick over here a ton and uh, always ready to show compassion, but also some wisdom too on how okay, you know, if you're feeling good today, do these things. If you're not feeling so good, maybe do less, but these are the things that really need to be done to keep moving forward. And um, just, I found that really helpful. I'll go next. Um, at work, we had a switch in managers and just seeing in our manager, just the change into like a caring attitude, just dedication and real understanding for people was really big and very inspiring. Um, and I kind of like this chapter too, because as they explain like why people follow you, you know, it's not how much you know about the products. It's not how much you know about how to be a leader and knowing every step of the way but if you can really get down and help you know relate to your people care about them understand about them like and just ask the questions and you know 
there's always people to look for and ask answer, ask to find answers if you don't know it. But just continuing to just love your people wherever they're at, no matter what it is, like that's how you become a leader and create followers. Because then, I mean, we don't all have the answers to everything. So just knowing that and loving people anyways and committing to them makes all the difference, I think. I think too, along those lines, like helping people have a win too, like really looking for the wins and Laura, Lauren, you were pointing out the encouragement side of things and <clears throat> that can really go such a long way and it's just important to keep that in the back of our minds and I think we're all pretty good at it like I don't see in the chats that I'm in where people aren't good at it <clears throat> but I you know it's just good to like be really cognizant of that you know and keeping a positive bias when times are tough Melissa is really good at this she is really good about you know if I have like oh my goodness, like this and this and this happened or something at work. She's like, yeah, but this and this and this. I'm like, you're right, you're right, you're right. So she's really good at spinning things to have a positive bias all the time. And I know she does it in her family life too. I know she does it with patients, with her coworkers. You know, I've seen it happen over and over again. So we can definitely learn from sweet Melissa over there in that department. Do you guys have anything else about this book in general or your specific strengths that you're uncovering? I think my conclusion to the book is that <clears throat> digging into it a little bit more in terms of your own personal, your, your person, your, where you are, where your strengths are, but also I've been asking all of my girls like, okay, where, tell me your strengths, tell me your strengths, because I want to familiar, familiarize myself with the things that how they're excited to lead and what they're strong in leading so that as we continue to work together, then I can have them, I can delegate differently or put them in charge of things. And I think that is something that I think of as well. Like, you know, there's a lot that us jewels we do and we're, we've become much more efficient at, at just doing it. Right. But then it doesn't leave as much, sometimes it doesn't leave as much responsibility for others. And then it's easy to just be like, well, I don't really have an active role here. So I'm not, I don't need to be a part of X, Y, and Z, you know? So <clears throat> I think that when, and that's part of why we want to pull you guys into like messenger chats and parties and stuff. Like we want you to know that oh my gosh, it's amazing when you do those things because it benefits the whole team. And, you know, it's like, I've done them. It, I, I can, and I will, I'm absolutely happy to do it, but we can also pull in new leaders to do that too. So I think too, he said, um, you know, if you want to lead, it's critical to know what the people around you need and expect from you. And sometimes we just have it in our head what we think people need and expect from us versus actually asking them. And that's something that I know I've failed at in the past is not asking people what they need and expect. And just by going on what I think, and what I think isn't always right, it's often not. So making sure that I'm asking people, you know, what what do you want and need and expect, you know, and what's the best way to communicate that? Are you someone who likes videos? Do you want me to tag you in videos? Do you want to hop on the phone? Do you want to do text? Do you want to do messenger? You know, what's the frequency that works best for me to check in with you? Um, so just asking some of those things that seem really simple and no brainer ish, but sometimes we forget. So the more that we know somebody and even just those stupid little things, you know, like um, learning to leave voice messages versus just typing stuff out, you know, 
um, just those little things have made a big difference, I think. And, you know, um, Rochelle and Elizabeth and Lauren, um, you might um, be able to comment that on that a little bit. We've, we've changed a lot. And a lot of that is just asking people. So um, I would encourage you to do that with your people as well. And that's why I try, try to end every coaching call I have with, is there anything that you need from me? What do you need from me to move forward in your business? What do you need from me? And that wasn't always easy to ask because I'm like, oh my gosh, you're going to need like 600 things and I'm failing and I'm not doing a good job. And, and that's not the case. That is not the case at all. Um, usually my girls are like, I'm great. I just needed to work on the things we're talking about, you know? Um, and I feel like that with my leaders, I'm like, well, I just need to do the work. Like, <laughs> it's not like you need to do something differently. Somebody ahead of me, I just need to keep doing the work. So cast a strong vision. Oh, I like that Rochelle Berman that you wrote in the chat. What obstacle can I help you remove so that you can be successful? I think that's really good too, because that means that it doesn't even mean that I'm going to like fix every issue in someone's life, right? I'm That is not my role to fix a parenting issue or a work issue or a marriage issue, but it means I can say, hey, I read this book and it helped me, or hey, I heard of this book that so-and-so read and they posted about it, you know, someone that we look up to and that we trust, right? And it was really helpful for them. So we can po pull our knowledge of resource to other people and say, hey, check out this, check out that. We don't ever want to say, well, X, Y, and Z, do this and that, do this and this and this to fix your work relationship with your boss. But we can point people into the right direction, you know, go to John Maxwell and look up, there's a law of teamwork book that he has. And we've pulled that, Jackie and Lauren and I pulled that book up a couple of times and pulled different chapters for some situations that have come up and gone, okay, well, John Maxwell says this. And that way we aren't like, well, I think this. And I think that we're like, John Maxwell says this, the leadership guru, the problem solving guru in these situations. So let's see what he says. Um, and pointing people to books and resources is always going to help. And, you know, we have a lot of resource in terms of like those obstacles that might come up with the business. Um, and I've done a few calls, at least two that I remember, probably more where I just talk about scheduling and your kids and buy in from your family and how to be busy and have meaningful time with your family and also do this business. And so pointing people to stuff like that is, is going to be helpful too. That's just an example. I'm not saying me. I'm just, I know I have them. There's probably other people that have done them too, but you can always point people to video resources as well. All right, does anybody have anything else I want to add? Anything about this book in general? Anything you're going to change in your business or in your other parts of your life because of reading this book? That's another good question. Well, if you think of it, you can make a post or a video right? And that might come over time because I, I do want to dig into this book a little bit more myself. So you might see me talking about it again. <laughs> Personal growth is always good. All right. Somebody put this date on their calendar. Elizabeth's book club ended at 929 and with an interruption. It goes, it's like a world record or something. All right, thanks you guys for getting on.